Hello everybody, it's Michelle here with Angel Souls. Thank you so much for being here. And before we even get into this message, and it is a big one, all right, so just be ready for that. Uh, but before we get into that, I just wanna say thank you so much to everybody who supports me, who supports this channel. It is amazing. And I love you all so much, especially when you do a social media brand as a career. Uh, the algorithms are tricky. Things don't always get pushed out. Some things get, you know, pulled back, you know, and it happens across many different platforms. But thank you. I just want to say thank you when you like, subscribe, share it, uh, when you leave your comments. That is all super helpful. And of course, joining my lives, getting personal readings. And on that note, oh, and on Patreon, thank you guys for supporting me on Patreon. So if you would like a personal reading with me, go to my website at angelsouls444.com. For the moment, I'm not doing the live readings, okay? So it's just my standard reading, which is delivered to you via email. Now, sometimes people get turned off by that, and I'm not sure why. <laughs> it's actually incredibly convenient for you, and you get a very pure channeled message from your guides, your angels, from archangels, uh, letting you know what it is that you need to know in order to grow and to live your best life. So angelsouls444.com on that. And my lives, I have so many great lives coming up. The next one is on October 3rd, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, and I'm going to be doing very deep channeled angelic messages. So the ones where I'm doing the channel messaging, I can go deeper and I can say more there than what I can here on YouTube. So check that out. Always check the description box for upcoming lives. I have one coming up on October 10th and one on November 11th. I'll probably sprinkle another couple of them somewhere in there. So check that out. Now, the last thing I want to say, I had a really weird dream last night and this, yes, this has to do with the message. Of course it does. Now, if you guys have watched my videos or followed me for any amount of time, you know that I had a dream right before 9-11. I had a dream actually um, around Fukushima. I had a dream around COVID. And last night I had a very vivid, wild dream about war and about weather. And I'm writing a quickie little blog about it where I can get into it. I'll put that over at Substack. That'll be up for free for you to read. And as soon as I can get caught up on everything, <laughs> I know it's tough. I'm doing my own marketing, filming, editing, um, my own bookkeeping, you know, all kinds of things. But I, I do intend to get more blogs up on my website and over at Substack as well as that novel. So yeah, so there's that. But the dream, when I woke up and I had that same feeling I've had for every single one of those events, I knew I, I had to maybe get it out there. Maybe nothing will happen. I'm human. I could be wrong. It could have just been a dream, but um, it didn't just feel like a regular old dream. All right. So as far as the war thing goes, um, again, I have to be careful what I say here. Go over to Substack. You can read it on there. It'll be really short. I'll make it nice, short and sweet. <laughs> okay. So the preparedness continues. Um, we are going through these huge, um, I want to call them epiphany kind of moments. So that's different to me. I mean, it's all transformational, but having the epiphany is sort of a, a resolution. It's sort of, a, oh, I'm glad I understand that. Now, it may not be the news that you want to hear, whether that's in your personal life or we see something out in the world, but it's definitely going to bring closure to a situation, okay? So you can let something go. Maybe you get some clarity on how you want to create and manifest the next phase of your life. Please make sure you check out the meditations that I am putting up. Uh, I'm just doing, you know, the solfeggio, you know, frequencies and all of that so that you can meditate on your own and lift up your frequency. So there's that. And I keep hearing disasters. You know, it's more of the same. But as we say this, this is not so that you get disheartened so that you get scared, so that you, um, or even panic and feel like, oh, I have to do like superhuman prep or whatever. <laughs> I'm kind of that person. I don't know what it is, but like when I know a blizzard's coming, for example, I will go nuts getting prepared for it, not out of fear, but I like it. It, it feels like, like how well can I do this? And by the time those first snowflakes are falling, I'm cozy on my couch with a nice fuzzy blanket, 
a cup of tea, a book light, and a book. <laughs> I'm just enjoying the weather while everybody else is still scrambling around trying to get prepared. So, um, you know, it's not so that you panic. I want to make that abundantly, abundantly clear. But this is, um, it's going to rock your world. It's going to rock your world. Now, I'm going to be doing an October angelic messaging overview, okay? Uh, and I only just thought of it now. That's why it's coming up. <laughs> Like a couple days after October, but uh, I just felt compelled to really dive into that because we know that time is not linear. So it's really hard to, especially with the kind of work that I do, it's kind of hard to just take it month by month. Um, but we're going to try, all right, to piece it out for our human brain, our third dimensional ego consciousness, and see if we can't break some of that information down. We have more and more helpers coming. They've been here a long time. But we're going to start seeing who we can trust and who's not trustworthy. And I mean this in a grander scale than your friends. Um, although that is happening too. There are huge um, turnabouts happening all over the world where people are finally waking up and going, oh, this isn't normal. Oh, I don't have to hide behind this, that, or the other. Um, I can come out and say what's really going on. See, there's been this whole veil and this whole thing that we've had, it's, it, and it's caused fear, whether that's fear of being un-PC, um, insulting someone, right? Or being punished for there being backlash. We're seeing huge, like the ultimate punishment for people wanting rights. And we've known, if you've had a good heart, if you're a good person, you've known how wrong these things have been. But there was a societal sticky film on everything, like, don't talk about it. Don't go there. You might insult someone. Or worse, you might get a huge backlash. I am enjoying seeing on social media, one example of many, about how women especially are speaking up. You know that's a big deal to me. I am very happy to see body positivity. You can roll your eyes all you want. It's going to come back to you times 10. I'm very happy to see people loving themselves, accepting themselves. And that doesn't have to have anything to do. I mean, it has something to do with size, but that it doesn't stop there. Whoever you are, that is your unique signature. That is your unique incarnation. And to come into a world where people then want to, you know, diminish you and make you feel like an awful human and make you feel like you're not pretty enough or you're not strong enough or you're not this or that or whatever enough. We're breaking through that. So see, see how some of these things are really good. <laughs> They're really, really good. And now we're in a bigger capacity to love one another. The trend of separation is going to continue. It's not in the way that you think. We are now, again, going back to the example of men, I don't wanna say men versus women, cause that's not fair, but let's say misogyny um, versus women. They're becoming, the misogynists are becoming more and more apparent. Why? We've woken up and now it sounds really outlandish when they speak when they behave the way they do. There was a time when that was normal, it's still normal to some. That is what we're going towards. How do you keep your peace? How do you stay centered? How do you reach your potential in this next phase of your life? Now, as long as you're in a human body, you're always going to be growing, developing, all of that. So Archangel Shamuel is one of many archangels that you can work with who helps you, and Archangel Uriel helps you reach your fullest potential. Archangel Metatron, you know, they can all help you. Um, and you have to be ready though. I want to say that. You have to be ready. And this is where a lot of people get stuck. This is where I get a lot of people coming to me for the readings to see what, it, they kind of word it like, what did I do wrong? And it's not that they've done anything wrong and got stuck, it's sort of, uh, it's, it's, the, it's the gateway, if you want to see that, or I was talking, I did a whole live on portals. <laughs> it's sort of the portal moment 
where are you ready to leave this old version of you behind? Are you ready to step into a new reality? That can hurt. It can feel like a part of you is gone. It can feel like a part of you has died. It can feel like you're letting go of people who don't want to come with you. And that keeps a lot of people from going to that next level. Or we have a lot of people who are being influenced by dark energy, who will come in and pose as spiritual people. We've talked about this for forever. It could be pretty extreme, like you have a psychopath or a sociopath that's pretending to be a guru or what have you. Or you get people who influence you by, you know, trying to act like they're more spiritual than you. Or, guys, <laughs> I've been an angel medium professionally for many, many years, all right? And I was doing it not professionally long before that. And I would still, not that I know everything. It's not that I know everything. When people have something to share and it's out of love and grace and harmony, I'm so grateful for that teaching. I'm so grateful to have that soul to reflect back and forth with me. But so often, especially on social media, you will have people come in and say, you don't do it right. You're this, you're that. Oh, I already know all about that. Oh, I, you know, I'm above it all. And then you have others who say, who don't like when you say that, right? Or you have the enablers. We talk about this all the time. You have the enablers who are like, oh, be nice to them. Like, come on. You're going to find that, the, I keep talking about this too. I'm sorry. It's, it's a lot of the same messaging. I do apologize. But again, time is not linear and we don't just learn our less, lessons wholly and completely in one week or in one day, right? It's going to go on and on. So the people who uh, are either functioning with some dark energy, you better do some soul searching and see if that's you. Uh, and the people who support that, if you don't see something wrong with dark energy, then there's something in you that vibrates with it. If you don't immediately recognize, it doesn't mean that you have to have a feeling of hatred. It doesn't mean that you have to feel uh, judgmental or anything like that. You just see it. And if you sense that there's anything in that person, of course, that person might have some light too. You might be very tempted to go in and pull the light out. That's what a lot of light workers are doing. And what happens? You end up getting into a codependent dynamic. Be careful. Be very careful. But I'm telling you, the people who have been supporting the darkness, whether you're an enabler or you are somebody who allows that to come in and you, you function from that place, I'm genuinely concerned. It breaks my heart because although I don't like the treatment I get from people like that and I don't like how they treat others, at the end of the day, they're still human and I get it. That's where a lot of enablers start <laughs> going, they're still human, you gotta be nice. I mean, I don't wanna see anything horrible happen to anybody. And I wanna make it clear, it's not a punishment. It's not a punishment. It's a self-belief that draws in an experience. And we're in a world that's, for good reason, falling to pieces. And when it's falling to pieces, you're gonna get cut. So if you're not prepared for that, if you don't see that what's falling down needs to fall down because that was the dirty film hiding something beautiful and you try to scramble to put those pieces back together, you see what I'm saying? Like you're going to fall apart. You're going to malfunction. This is where we see a lot of people, they can't handle their stuff and so they try to um, use people or... Um, treating women like objects as a distraction. And, and it doesn't just go with women, obviously. That, that's just an example, okay? Um, but being down on others in one way or another. And being down on others, I'm hearing now, to be careful about... Social media has permeated our lives, obviously. And it can be very, very good. It can also be very, very bad. So you can have people who come out and act like they're fighting for a cause, act like they are the person that's going to fight for you. If you, especially if you're somebody who doesn't have much of a voice or hasn't been allowed to have much of a voice, but really they're being fed 
by the popularity. They're being fed by being someone's hero. That's, that's dark. You think I'm overstating it? Then you're not paying attention. Take this. Take this. If you know anything about the messages that I have brought through, anytime I read energy and I get messages from angels, so angels and other spirit guides, light beings and things like that. So when it comes in, the way I'm to deliver it has to do with you. So often I hear people say, oh my God, can't you just say it? Quit, quit being so vague. Stop dancing around it. Well, stop needing it to be vague. Stop needing it to be sugar-coated. Stop lashing out every time somebody lays something down for you to consider. Stop lashing out every time someone challenges you. Do the work. Do the work. Now, here's the thing about that. I know that might sound scary, and it can be, for sure. But, <laughs> but the thing is, is uh, when you're in there, and even if you're a well-seasoned spiritual practitioner, you know, if you're genuine, you know you are constantly growing. For the past month, my sleep has been so messed up. I've been sleeping more hours out of the day and just been like, you know, I know there's nothing physically or mentally going on. I've got a clean bill of health, and I know that I'm going through some major personal transformations. I'm getting, well, my birthday's in November, so <laughs> I'm, I'm in my wind down period before that happens. But, you know, I've allowed myself to um, rest, to sit and meditate and to um, not feel like I have to finish a project. If I write, it's for me. You see what I'm saying? And that's okay. So during that process, yes, there will be a lot of pressure to be like, oh my gosh, I should have been more productive. I should have gotten this done. I should have gotten that done. People are leaning on me or expecting things from me and I needed to be there for them and I wasn't. Now I feel guilty. But I sit here before you now, rested. <laughs> I've been going through a lot of spiritual growth. I have been doing my own inner work, things that are now coming up to the surface because I'm ready to look at them, right? So let's just get to the cards. If you have questions about that, let me know. And if there are enough of the same question, I will make a whole other video. Oh, there it is. Daniel, he is, <laughs> this is an old deck. This is one of the first decks that I ever purchased. Uh, and he is the angel of marriage. So hang with me here. I am the angel of marriage and I am assisting you right now. What's so funny, when this deck came out, everyone's like, oh, I know Daniel's one of my angels. You know, Daniel, the, the angel of marriage. I have an encyclopedia of, you know, angels. I, actually, I have a whole library of angel books. <laughs> of course I do. But people are just going off of one author's interpretation on one card of what an angel does. If you get a card like this, okay, and you feel a connection with an angel named Daniel, go do some research and see what else that angel does. It may not pertain to marriage. Okay. But in this case, we're going to get more cards around this. This is a marriage of different sorts. It can be literal for you. Maybe you're working on a marriage. Oh, hi. Okay. All right. Um, oops, they're supposed to go in a different order. This is a marriage of ideas. This is a marriage, it, it almost, um, the marriage part of this is representing how we get married, like I said, to an idea. To um, a group a group, a group, group way of thinking, I guess. I'm trying to figure out how to put this. Uh, we get married to a societal idea. So now we're being asked to back away from that. And so then we have Uriel. Archangel Uriel, who I mentioned, will help us get to our potential. But here's how. And this is the part that nobody wants to do, right? Your emotions are healing, which enables you to open to greater love. Okay? I will help you release anger and unforgiveness from your heart and mind. I cannot tell you how many times I have heard someone say, I, I love myself. I have great self-esteem. And they're the most insecure person. That's where you get narcissism from. Or someone says, I'm not angry. And yet everything that is coming out of them is anger and maybe even a victim mentality. Now, if you have had things happen to you 
that's okay. You go through that phase of victim mentality, maybe because you have never been able to speak up. You've never been able to allow all of it out. But then there are people who um, intentionally try to find a way to victimize themselves so people fawn over them. Vulnerable narcissists, covert narcissists, they do things like that. Now here's, here's this one, okay? Desiree, no, conditions aren't favorable right now. Wait or look into other options and ask the angels for help uh, and ask the angels to help guide and comfort you. This, look at, first of all, it's a beach. We just had Hurricane Ian hit Florida and the Carolinas. So they're still recovering and I didn't get a chance to listen to what the latest was, but they're going through a lot. So I love you guys. I love you so much and bless all the souls that crossed over at that time as well. And of course my love to every area in the world where innocence is being taken. I love you. I stand with you. Please know we stand with you. I'm, I'm there every moment. All right. But this is telling us to sort of weigh our options and to be a little bit smarter about things. So here's an example that's coming up right now. Um, let's say you go into a line of work and you like the work and you know, you see that it's a little corrupt. There, There's, you know, some stuff going on. Now, the emotional revolutionary part of you might go, you know what, I'm going to rebel against that. So I'm going to come out and tell everybody how I feel. <laughs> I went through this phase. I'm going to go out and tell everybody how I feel. And I'm, I'm going to get a lot of people who agree with me. What ends up happening is that people are fearful and they shut down. They don't want to associate with somebody who is just... You know, again, this is tricky because there, there's a time and a place uh, to let that stuff out, okay? And, and various situations call for different things. But on a low-key level, so like on a personal level, and without being manipulative, this is very tricky, without being manipulative, we want to remain in our integrity, not accept or take on an energy of somebody else who is trying to be manipulative, Again, it's that observe and don't get invested kind of thing and wait it out. So for some of you, you might, this feels very specific. So um, if you're in a work situation, for example, and you just feel like enough, I'm so tired of this. Um, it's not like you have to stay there forever. It just means like this moment, something may change. Like the person, like if you have a bad boss, that boss might leave. You need more information to come along. And with Archangel Uriel here and the Daniel card here, it's saying you're kind of getting stuck. You're getting stuck in a mindset that could have you making other choices. So choices that are not going to align with who you really are, right? So we have to do that sort of spiritual cleaning in our energy field, yes, so that we know, okay, I stayed away from this group of people because I had my own anger or I rejected someone. This could be, you know, I did this where I totally ran away from someone because at the time I had been through a lot with relationships. I was coming from a certain, I wasn't healed yet. I wasn't healed. And so I saw everybody, especially men, as potential predators or potential, um, whatever, just somebody, a perpetrator, like somebody who could really harm me. And so everybody got pushed out. And I had a really hard time with that. Uh, this is that kind of thing where whatever you, whatever, think about any situation right now that's been weighing heavily on your heart. Again, remember, these are general readings. If you want a personal reading with me, we can go right into it and I will channel messages for you, angelsouls444.com. Um, there's a wait list, but I try to get them to you as soon as possible. Okay. Um, but if I'm going to be at full capacity for my work, I can't just get up and like pump out per, uh, personal readings. I have to get up and go out in nature. I have to get up and meditate. I have to get up and do my spiritual practices, do my yoga. I have to do that <laughs> if I'm going to be, um, there for you. You know what I'm saying? So just remember that. But this has this feeling of things are not what they seem. More information coming in. 
seeing where you need to still release some anger and unforgiveness. Like where do you need to release yourself out of a situation? Because that Desiree card is definitely saying you're operating from a space of, okay, I was going to say a space of lack. A lot of people are worried about money right now. Again, social media people, if you have a social media channel and that's been like me, that's your income, you know it has been tough. It has been scary, actually. And I don't know, there's a whole thing around that. But, <laughs> you know, it's funny, just as an aside, like years ago, people would have told you, oh, study digital marketing because that's, you know, oh, that's good. Well, now everybody has done it. And now the algorithm, you can't figure it out. You can't, and people say that they know the algorithm and they don't. You could check any creator who thought they knew what they were doing, but things change all the time, right? So that's just a perfect example of what's going on on a worldwide stage. <laughs> like you think you got it and then here's a new piece of information. Um, but definitely there's a message here of we are working from anger and fear and it's going to have us making impulsive decisions perhaps. Uh, so we have Teresa here, time out. <laughs> so it comes right after the Desiree cards. It's like, no, no, now is not the time. Uh, time out, you've been so busy taking care of everyone else's needs and now it's time to stop and take care of yourself. Let's be careful with this. This is the martyr mentality, the way this is worded, okay? I'm just there for everybody else and oh my goodness, yeah, let's watch it, okay? Because that's not an energy we want to be getting into, but take the self-care part of it. That's the takeaway part. How are we on time? Oh my goodness, we've been in here a long time. Okay, so <laughs> we'll pull this card next. Uh, Prosperity, Archangel Ariel. Ariel is all about nature, getting grounded, being in touch, releasing that creativity, bringing in money and prosperity and material things. So uh, especially for any of you who are looking for a house, work with Ariel, okay? Your material needs are provided for as you follow your intuition and manifest your dreams into reality. So when we release ourselves, energetically. When we stop and go, okay, is this my pain that's putting all of this energy around a situation and I'm afraid to be diminished or I'm afraid to be married? I know. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> we're afraid of a relationship or we're afraid uh, to let go of something that we've been trained to think it's blocking our prosperity. So there's a mix of things going on here, as I've been saying, where, yes, we got to be looking at and be honest about how we really feel. And yet being willing to adjust to what is happening in the world. Um, you know, everybody ran to remote positions, right? Because we got used to that during the past couple of years. Now... I hear it all the time. People are like, I can't get a remote job. And these people who offer remote work are really making people jump through hoops. Uh, if you're a writer, they you know that they constantly ask for writing samples. I'm somebody who has a whole writing portfolio. And when they say, no, 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 we want you to write specifically on this, my answer is always no. I have a professional portfolio put together. You can observe that to get my writing style. You can observe that to get an idea of what I can do, I'm not giving you free work. So if you're a writer or you're even like, if you do digital assets or something like that, that is, <laughs> that is a way that a lot of these companies are getting free work out of you. So just be mindful of that. But this whole thing, it's a big opportunity. It may not sound like it, but it is. It is you discovering what has held you back. And it might just be a little piece of it, but that's okay. That's okay. That's why you signed up to be human, okay? <laughs> right? That's what you're doing here, to find one little piece and enjoy sort of the puzzle of life. I said that. Yes, I did. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry I said that. That's so dumb. But anyway, <laughs> you're, you're going to be able to piece it together. You got to take accountability, though. You got to take accountability and not lashing out at other people. Again, using social media as a perfect example. How often do we have keyboard warriors who are, you know, in the spiritual community, lashing out at somebody because I don't like what you said to me and then turning around and diminishing that person. It, you're going to pay for it. 
Okay, it may not be obvious, okay, but I can guarantee you that people who have been working with dark energy, if they don't realize it and turn it around, it's going to be more and more obvious what happens in their life and how it falls apart. And um, I almost feel like they're kind of kind of be in this forced position because everything falls apart um, to look at themselves. Now, as I say that, be mindful of anybody who is toxic, right? Like let's say you have an ex and their whole life falls apart and then they come crawling back to you acting like you should care for them and feel sorry for them. If they come back and want your pity or want you to pick up the pieces for them, that's a hard no. And if you go into it, don't complain when it falls apart, all right? Now, if somebody, you know, you're getting another chance at a love partnership and they're not coming back expecting you to fix their life, they're not playing the victim, you know, and you want to explore it, be friends first, okay? <laughs> so we're going to leave it there. Check me out on the other video, the October overview. Check me out on the live on October 3rd when we go even deeper than this, if you can imagine. Oh, yes. We're going to go even deeper. Get your tickets down below from the links in the description box. So thank you all so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And I am sending you my love always. Take care.